Okay, two things. Firstly, ignore the clickbaity title and the thumbnail. I had to get it out there because I really do want to address some stuff and talk about what's been going on in the YouTube channel lately. Secondly, peep the Michael Myers shirt. I think y'all might have noticed a little theme here. It's October. There are a lot of festivities going around that's all spooky around North America here. So we have been trying to represent that. A lot of good Jason Voorhees and Chucky stuff I've been seeing around here in Vegas as well. But this is our hotel room view. You can see the magnificence of different downtown LV parking lots in the background. A lot of other hotels are in the back too. Honestly, it's not that great of a view, but the location is pretty good. We are right away from Fremont over there, so all of the festivities are just a short walk ahead. But I did seriously want to go out there and talk about the YouTube channel, just kind of address everything that's been going on, and also talk about some other updates because I got it popped up on my computer back there talking about some of the latest Vancouver Canucks news, and I do think that is noteworthy to go out there and describe. So firstly, I wanted to say that today's show, we had two videos uploaded that I got quite a bit of response from on Twitter because they were posted. Firstly, it was the Mark Friedman video. The Canucks Rathbone trade was a win video. That's the same video. They traded Rathbone for Friedman and we made a video talking about how that was a great move. I got some responses on social media saying, oh, this is like a weird video to post, man. Like Mark Friedman just got waved. Why are you talking about this here? And then the second video I uploaded was about Vegas you know, we are in Vegas. So I had to record a vlog on the street. It was 1 a.m. at night and we recorded the Raphael Lavoie and Cole Schwint claiming video from the Vegas Golden Knights because they took themselves two guys from Edmonton and Alberta. And the funny part is I said in that video, like, oh, maybe Raphael Lavoie is gonna go on waivers again tomorrow. And that's exactly what happened. So part of the reason I wanted to make this little commentary about the stuff that's been going on is because right away, I am starting to see the Duncan Keith syndrome happening once again. If you don't know the Duncan Keith syndrome, a few years ago, I made a pre-recorded video that talked about how Duncan Keith was almost traded from the Blackhawks to the Oilers and how the trade was rejected, how one of the parties involved said no, they pulled out, and the trade did not get completed. And I made that video at night and I was gonna plan to make it public on YouTube the next morning, only to find out when I woke up later in the afternoon that, hey, the video that I published is now out of date because Duncan Keith did get traded to Edmonton. So that's kind of what I like to call the Duncan Keith syndrome. I think it's happened like two times in the channel's total history, two or three times, where we talk about something that did not happen or we make a rumor video about a guy that could get traded or something. And because I sleep late, those videos usually are pre-recorded and pre-scheduled to be public on YouTube the next morning. So only three times, I think, in the channel's history has it happened where a guy completely gets removed from the situation that we're talking about in the video. Either he does get traded or something else happens that completely invalidates the necessity of that video that we had made. Duncan Keith got traded before we publicly made the video that said that he was not getting traded. So that's kind of the syndrome there. I don't wanna say it's exactly the same thing here, because part of the reason the Mark Friedman video was getting flack was because he got sent down on waivers. This is obviously before I woke up and I pre-schedule uploaded the video to go live after the waiver announcement was made. So some people were kind of clamoring on me about that. And then there was the video about the Vegas Golden Knights and Raphael Lavoie. A lot of folks going out there and saying, oh, but he's on waivers again. Lego, what are you talking about? And, you know, I think it's not necessary for me to make this video. I don't need to. I do think I'm doing this just out of good faith, just so I can continue being transparent with all you guys and saying that, hey, this has kind of always been the style of videos that I make. I pre-record them the morning or the night before, and then they get schedule uploaded for the morning the next day. And it's been like that for a few years now. It's just the system that I'm really comfortable with. We usually find stories that are still relevant for the next day, but because I'm here, I don't have my recording equipment. I don't have my microphone. I don't have anything except for my smartphone. 
I have no choice but to have pre-recorded videos days beforehand. And it's why every video that I'm uploading that's like with the gameplay in the background and with proper audio and everything, every one of those videos has the disclaimer at the beginning saying, hey, I'm in Vegas. I'm pre-recording this on October 4th or October 5th or whatever. I'm not home. So I can't go out there and make our regularly scheduled programming. Now you can get into another conversation as to scheduling a big family vacation at this time of the year when all the NHL news is gonna be coming up. That's a separate issue. But the fact is I'm here now and this was always gonna be the plan. So for y'all that were giving me a hard time in the comments, just to let you know, I understand where you're coming from. It totally makes sense. It's weird to see a video about the Mark Friedman trade being a win on a day where he just gets sent down on waivers. And it also is weird to talk about how the Vegas Golden Knights claimed a guy that they ended up placing on waivers the very next day. If the Oilers end up reclaiming Raphael Lavoie, then you could ignore everything that we had said in the video from earlier today. I was about to say last night because I did record it last night. I was at Fremont Street, downtown Las Vegas at 1 a.m. just walking around in public with the beautiful lights talking about these two players. I actually, Felt like I wanted to make that video, not necessarily because the news was good, but because I wanted to talk about something in the Vegas nightlife. And I feel like that is more appropriate of a way to do it because, oh yeah, Lego, this news is from yesterday. Why are you making a video about it now? Well, think about it. I wasn't really free for most of the day. I'm on vacation for crying out loud. And I had an opportunity for some free time, finally, to actually get out and explore. So I was like, let's use this time at 1 a.m. to record a quick video. We'll upload it later and we'll make it public on YouTube later. We're not going to make it public now because it's 1.30 a.m. in the morning now by the time I was finished recording that video. So what? Do you think it's a better decision to go out there and make a video publicly, put it out there at 1 a.m. at night or just wait a little bit? I was like, this is not breaking news anymore because the guys got claimed like 12 hours ago. So we're just gonna schedule upload it for the next day and then whatever happens happens and we'll be okay. That was ultimately what I had to internalize within myself. We're gonna be okay no matter what happens. So even though some people might've gotten a little bit, uh, I don't wanna say ticked off, not necessarily ticked off, but maybe turned off. That's the right way to say it, I think by today's programming. Hey, I'm on vacation. What else can I do? I'm trying my best here, guys. And sometimes my best when I am not fully accessible to the internet nor my computer recording equipment, sometimes my best is not good enough to keep up to date with the standard that we have set on this channel in the past. And that's okay. You know, I'm still making videos here, still trying to get by talking about stuff. And that continues with today's other video because I did want to go out there and talk about the latest Vancouver Canucks news. I wanted to give a big shout out over to the folks on Twitter. What is their Twitter account? Let's go out there and see this over here. Um, is that gonna be reversed or no? Yeah, I think it is gonna be reversed. Canucks News Summaries, V Canucks News. What they did was they went out there and published two tweets talking about the Vancouver Canucks News and Notes from the Darren Dreger interview on where was this? Uh, I think it was SNP. SNP, Sakaris and Price? Yes, it was. Sakaris and Price, Darren Dreger had an interview over there. And then earlier today, there also was stuff from Rick Tockett, who ended up speaking to the media. So let's go out there and flip the camera. We can talk about these two in its own little thing here. So I don't know how the audio is going to sound, but let's talk about the Canucks. We got a few minutes to go in this video. Firstly, Joshua and Demko timelines, three to four weeks until Joshua and Demko return. Not surprising, not bad. Dakota Joshua had cancer. He could take as long as he wants to recover from that. And Thatcher Demko, look, as long as they're not forcing him to come back, it's okay with me. Give him as long as he needs to recover and eventually get back to form. In terms of the Pullman and Bronstrom trade, there's still upside in Eric Bronstrom. Okay, that's fine. I mean, he's going to get sent down to Abbotsford, so hopefully he exhibits that there. The management in Vancouver is considered one of the smartest groups in the league. Oh yes, baby, that is great. Patrick Alvin, Jim Rutherford, Gaston Gay Granado, awesome, awesome crew. Time to separate Alvin and Rutherford in terms of giving credit. According to some agents, Patrick Alvin can be cutthroat. Really? So he's the guy going out there and being a pain in the behind to work with for other GMs. That's awesome. Love me some Patrick Alvin there. 
Next up, some news on Nils Hoglander. Even if he doesn't work out with the Canucks, it's an affordable contract that is easy to move. Three million bucks a year for a guy who could score 20 even strength goals a year. Not bad. He could also still be moved as a trade piece this season, which is not surprising considering that he is on the fourth line. Trade targets down the road. The Canucks will be looking for a third line center, probably as an upgrade on Teddy Bluger. We know they did this last year with Elias Lindholm. And finally, we have some news on ownership. Darren Dreger is willing to give the Aquilinis credit. They have been meddling at times, and this frustrated owner did take a step back when the management team came in right now. Rutherford wouldn't have taken on the job without complete autonomy. Rutherford is on the phone with Francesco quite a bit. He isn't sure if those calls are less frequent as the team has found more success, and there is a real healthy relationship between Rutherford and Aquilini. That's great, seeing that there actually is connection there and that it's Jim Rutherford and not Alvin who is doing all the negotiating and updating with Aquilini. We had seen Benning and Aquilini have such a tight relationship and it kind of influenced the way the team was run. Really unfortunate stuff over there. And then there's a lot of stuff going over here. Do we have enough time to talk about these Rick Tockett notes? I don't know, man. Jake DeBrusque, Zvezhkovsky, Daniel Sprong, Heinen. Okay, so he's talking about a lot of the players over here. We can go over these in another video. I think I had spent the majority of this one just talking about my news and notes with the channel. But either way, lots of good stuff going over with the Vancouver Canucks. Big shout out over to V Canucks News on Twitter, who is such an amazing Twitter account. I wanted to give them all of their props. But yeah, I think we could talk about this in a later video. Tomorrow, the Canucks do play off against the Calgary Flames to start out their season. And that is gonna be interesting. Because, of course, I am not going to be here to watch the game as it goes on. Um, hopefully we'll find a way to do it. Hopefully we'll find a way to make a video about it afterwards, but no promises, unfortunately. So for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about all these Canucks news and notes. What are your thoughts about the channel as well? And uh, any extra things you want to say to me personally? Because, you know... I'm here in this hotel room. I'm probably going to be out of this hotel room in a few minutes after I record this video and put everything together. But for now, thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to 99 And bye.